So this uh, particular one is a Patreon-sponsored review because, yes, uh, among just being able to, you know, help me cover my bills these days, um, you can actually commission me to review ones, and this one is one of those. This was something I think I had heard the title of. I knew almost nothing about, although I kind of sussed out what it was pretty quick. The Normal Heart. Now, The Normal Heart is a uh, film, it was an HBO film, so I, I didn't check this. I presume it premiered on HBO, the network, and didn't hit theaters. But it is based off a play of the same name, which is a largely autobiographical play written by a playwright named Larry Kramer. And um, it, while it is very much influenced by his own life experiences, you know, it does the usual names changed and, and that sort of thing. But it is set, um, so both the play and the film, um, and I'm, I'm only reviewing the film. I only mention the play because that's what this is, is based off of. And, uh, and as I said, written by someone who was there during the uh, events that are being depicted. It is set during the early 80s. And it focuses on uh, a gay man, played by Mark Ruffalo, and it tracks the first several years of the AIDS crisis, uh, focusing in New York, where it was especially concentrated, and really looking at the, um, <clears throat> the fallout of all that on multiple levels. The fallout uh, in terms of within the gay community. The fact that this crisis was largely and fairly blatantly ignored by anyone with the authority or the means to even attempt to help. The way that the community fought against being ignored, the way the community, they fought each other. Um, <clears throat> and also looking at, you know, some specific relationships as one uh, or more of the people involved have to watch someone they love that they're in a relationship with, wither and die. Watch this community of friends and lovers watch dozens, hundreds of people that they know die. Uh, you know, typical nice light watching. <laughs> um, no, it's heavy. I mean, it's very heavy and it should be, uh, given the, the subject matter. Uh, it's got a good cast, too, in addition to Mark Ruffalo, who, who I mentioned, um, Taylor Kitsch is in it, Matt Bromer, um, there were a number of other people who I, I recognize, but I, I probably couldn't, uh, uh, Jim Parsons is in it, um, Dennis O'Hare, that was another one I was trying to think of. It's a very good cast of people, uh, Julia Roberts is in it, playing a, uh, a wheelchair-bound doctor who was one of the first you know first medical professionals really trying to track this thing and do something about it but she's just not getting support and yeah it's it is heavy the moments of hope are there in the beginning they don't stay for very long and it's very good, and I think it's something that people, especially uh, LGBTQ plus uh, people my age or younger, would benefit from seeing. Because, speaking personally, I was, <clears throat> I was technically alive, you know, in the... Uh, as this outbreak was was building, but only just, you know, I was born in 82. So 
I've always, I've, I've, you know, grew up sort of being close enough timeline of my life wise to it to sort of have a vague idea that it was a thing that happened. But I think having a better sense of how much it tore apart and destroyed this community. Um, and, you know, specifically gay men, but the thing to keep in mind is that whether, you know, right or not, LGBTQ plus liberation has largely been led by gay men. Not to say that gay men are fighting for everyone else, but they make the headway first and it, it's a starting place for the rest of us to to try and get in there. And it, it was a setback for everyone. In, a, in addition to just the incredible loss of life and the devastation to communities and to families. And yet, at the same time, I feel like this, given the material, and given how well presented it is, I feel like it should have hit me harder than it does. And knowing that these days especially, that I'm a very easy mark, I cry a lot <laughs> at movies these days, like almost an embarrassing amount. Um, but I didn't get more than a few sniffles out of this. And I think it's because what it's doing really should have, I mean, I don't know how it works on stage, but just judging it as a film, this really should have been a miniseries. This should have been a total of four or five hours because for the amount of time that it's covering, the number of characters that it is asking us to have some degree of investment in. Even at two hours, it's not even that it feels rushed. It's just, it's jumping from them so often. I just was left feeling if I had spent a little more time with any of these individual characters and plots, I'd probably be slightly more invested and would be slightly more devastated by why I'm now seeing happening. And normally when I would see something like that in most stories, I'd say we need to chuck some of these subplots and some of these additional characters because, you know, they're, they're sapping some of the energy out of the room. Here, I actually wouldn't recommend that because I do think the breadth and scope of it is very well conveyed through how many characters we, we are seeing deal with this. So I, I do think to, and again, this is not to say that it's not impactful and it's not good. And I wasn't back and it gave me a lot to think about and really sort of wrap my head around, but it didn't hit me as hard emotionally as I thought it would. And I think that is just lacking the raw time with, with all of the characters involved. And I think had this been a mini series, had this been four or five or even just three hours that I, I probably, I probably would have needed a box of tissues. As it stands, I didn't. But that's not to say that I wasn't touched and moving. That's not to say that I'm not glad I saw this, because I, I absolutely am. The it, it, it also gave me a better understanding because it, it addresses a question that, like, I never asked out loud because, <laughs> you know, it, it just seemed rude and weird. I wouldn't know who to ask, but was always kind of in my head, which is once they realized it was sexually transmitted, why, why didn't everyone just go abstinent all of a sudden? And there's a couple things at play there. The first is that how quickly symptoms show varies from person to person, so someone can spread it before they know they're infected. And, but, sort of the bigger question, like, there's a scene where Julia Roberts is trying to impart to this group of gay men that they are risking their lives by engaging in sexual activity. And she says flat out, look, I don't have all the answers, but why would you risk it right now? Just stop. And 
intellectually, I was kind of on her side, but there was some really interesting points made by the men in that scene by the fact that for gay men, especially at that point in time, their promiscuity was basically their form of revolution. There weren't any discrimination protections for gay men. Depending on where you were in the country, there were still sodomy laws on the books. For gay men, the mere act of sex was an act of rebellion. It was an act of civil disobedience. It was an affirmation of their existence, of not being in the closet. Their simple ability to be with other men in a place like New York, which obviously as, as this whole thing went down, the authorities turned a blind eye and let them a lot of people die. But in New York, that was more tolerant where they could be themselves and they, it was important to them to be able to live themselves to the fullest. And it, it was good for me to have that perspective because the promiscuous gay male is a bit of a stereotype, but it's also especially going back to, you know, pre-AIDS times or, you know, at the start of all of this, there's a fair amount of truth to it. And I always kind of took it as like, oh man, yeah, they just, like, I'd always, I suppose, I'm not sure how much I thought about it. I guess I'd always brush it off as like, oh yeah, because guys are like, they're always horny and they'll do anything, yeah. Yeah, I was like that at one point. Sure, why not? But to to realize that there's more to it than just gay men are always horny. That it, it was for gay men their ability to be promiscuous was about the one thing that they had over straight people because there was no risk of pregnancy. And it was a big part of how the communities were knit together. And, you know, that sounds very superficial, but when the very nature of gathering these men together is that they are all attracted to other men, it's going to lead to a very sexually charged, sexually focused environment and group and community. Sex was important important to them. And to ask them to stop wasn't like asking most other groups to stop. And it's things like that and insights like that, um, in addition with having, um, like I said, a much better sense of, of the scope and the size and the speed at which, with which this just, it was like a bomb went off. <laughs> And seeing a variety of things, you know, some people having coughs and almost flu-like symptoms, some people degrading mentally, losing control of bodily functions. This, this film does not flinch. And like I said, even though I feel that it would have been more affected at a longer run time, I'm glad I saw it. And I feel like even though I know it's fictionalized, knowing that it is... Uh, it ties back to a work by someone who was there. I feel like I got an insight into something that I only ever just kind of had a vague understanding of. And I think it's good and healthy for me to have a better understanding of some of the history of the community that I'm a part of. I mean, I'm not a gay man, but I am part of the LGBTQ plus community. And as I said, you know, that's a part of that, just like trans rights are a part of that, just like pushes for lesbian and bisexual inclusion are a part of that. And it, it would behoove me to know more about the history of this community that I'm a part of. But I'm also not, I'm not a researcher by nature. I'm not built to sit down and read about this stuff. But 
if I can sit down and watch something that is two hours that gives me insight that I didn't have before, I think that is two hours well spent. The Normal Heart. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. A whole bunch of stuff to do as well. There's the Patreon I already mentioned. Even a uh, dollar a month is a huge help. Plus, you know, like, subscribe, the usual stuff. Other links down there too. Link to my book, social media, etc. Click on them. They'll take you places. But you don't have to. At the end of the day, you're the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. <laughs>